Hey everybody, Sue's here. Today I'm gonna show you how to make this awesome keto chocolate almond butter dessert. It's pretty easy to make, adapted from a recipe by the most brilliant Carolyn Ketchum from All Day I Dream About Food. I of course will link her original recipe down below in the description box, but since we do have a peanut allergic toddler in the house, we did adapt it and use almond butter and almond butter cups instead. So this is what it looks like. If you're not subscribed to our channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe subscribe button now for weekly keto cooking videos and let's go ahead and get started on this dessert. So starting out, I am using a eight by eight baking dish instead of her recommended nine by nine, just because that's what I have and it ended up working out well for us in the end, but I generally would follow her directions step by step exactly because she's just that good. I am going ahead and greasing it with some room temperature butter, and then we're just gonna sit this to the side and get started on our cake mix. So for that, in a large mixing bowl, I am adding one and a half cups of almond flour. I like to use Kirkland Super Fine Blanched Almond Flour. To that, I'm also adding two thirds a cup of granulated swerve, along with a third of a cup of just regular like Dutch processed cocoa powder, a fourth of a cup unflavored whey protein powder, and I will try to link the one that I use down below, along with two teaspoons baking powder, and I always take the back of my measuring spoon and kind of try to get those little lumps and cracks out of that, along with a fourth a teaspoon of salt, and then I'm taking a metal whisk and just whisking this all together to get out as many of those lumps out of the baking powder because there's nothing worse than biting into one of those. After I've got those dry ingredients mixed together, I'm adding in two eggs. And I'm gonna go ahead and whisk those in a little bit just because we're gonna be adding in some melted butter and I don't wanna accidentally cook those eggs up. So on the stove top on low heat, I've just been melting six tablespoons of unsalted butter and I did remove it from the burner and let it cool slightly before adding it into our bowl. And then I'm just gonna continue to whisk all of that in together. You could totally use a hand mixer for this part, but since we're gonna be using that for our frosting, I just decided to do this a little bit by hand. After we've whisked that together well, I'm adding in half a cup of water and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, moving over to a large spoon, and I'm just gonna use the back of that to kinda of mash this all together and mix it around until everything is blended well and just a consistent texture throughout. Um, but she does make a note not to over mix this. Grabbing that greased baking dish, I'm just gonna plop all of our chocolate cake mixture into it. And I do have my oven preheated to 325. And I found that for this particular recipe with this size um, dish, that 25 minutes at 325, worked perfectly for me, but you can play around with that. And I'm just using a spatula to spread that out evenly. And then again, popping it in the oven, 325 degrees for 25 minutes. While that is baking, gonna go ahead and prep my chocolate for our filling mixture. So for that, I'm just using one ounce of unsweetened baking chocolate. And I'm just using like regular baker's chocolate for this. You could use something fancier if you wanted. And each little rectangle of this represents a quarter of an ounce. So four of them is one ounce. And I'm just using a kitchen knife to chop that down. The smaller you chop this, the quicker and easier it will melt um, over on your stovetop. Every time I chop chocolate like this, it reminds me of my mom, like spending hours making homemade chocolate pies every year. All right, I'm also gonna go ahead and prep our almond butter, just using this Harris Teeter store brand. Look on the back, make sure your only ingredient is almonds. <laughs> if you want the best and cleanest, and of course it had oil separated at the top, we went ahead and mixed that in already to get started, but this is what I'm using. Now, taking our chocolate cake base out of the oven, I'm just gonna let it cool on a trivet for at least an hour and then get started on our filling. Over on the stovetop, after an hour, I went ahead and added a half a cup of unsweetened almond milk. I always buy this in bulk at Kirkland's and it's called non-dairy almond beverage and I use that for everything. And you can just store it unrefrigerated until you open it, works wonders. Now, we are on medium heat, so as soon as that started to bubble just slightly, I cut the heat off and added in our one ounce of chopped unsweetened chocolate and whisked it in a little bit and then let it sit a minute so it can melt and then you're just whisking that all the way until it's nice and smooth as you can see here 
and then I'm adding to that a third of a cup of that creamy almond butter along with a fourth of a cup of powdered swerve and then I'm just gonna whisk this all together until everything is nice and melted and combined really well. Again, the heat is off right now. We are gonna reserve a few tablespoons of this um, filling to use for a drizzle garnish later on the top of our cake. But we're gonna be pouring the rest of it over our cake because it is a keto poke cake. So as Carolyn Ketchum suggested, we are using the back of a wooden spoon to poke large holes all over our whole cake and you can see as it cools that the top of it kind of unpuffs and comes down a little there and then I'm just gonna pour everything but like two or three tablespoons of this chocolate filling mixture right on top mostly aiming for the holes so that that chocolate mixture can soak into those and then after it soaks in if you want to take a spatula and just spread this evenly on top so you kind of have an even chocolate shell this is how much was left over. I'm gonna stick this pot of chocolate filling back on the stove top with the lid because we're gonna remelt it later. And I'm gonna spread this even and then stick this in the fridge for about an hour at least to let it set. And then we're gonna be using these Evolve Almond Butter Keto Cups as a garnish. Now in her original recipe linked down below, she uses four Keto Peanut Butter Cups as a garnish. We're just gonna use two of these. You can buy them in a big bag like this or you can buy little packs like this. I found them at Whole Foods. I will link them down below. Again, going back to that same cutting board with our kitchen knife, and I'm just gonna roughly chop these, and I'm just using enough for looks, really, to add just a garnish. You could totally make this keto dessert without this step, and I think it would taste wonderful still. So sticking those over to the side, we're gonna get started on our frosting. And for that, I pulled out my stand mixture and I'm adding a third of a cup of the almond butter to it, along with a fourth of a cup of unsalted butter that is softened really, really well. Adding my beater attachment and I'm just gonna cream this together on low until it's nice and mixed. And then add in a third of a cup of powdered swerve to that. And I just like to use a little spatula to kind of push down the edges and make sure everything's getting mixed. I find sometimes when you're creaming butter together with other ingredients, sometimes the butter will stick to the bottom of your mixing bowl. So just periodically use that spatula to make sure it's all getting incorporated well. And once it has, I'm adding two tablespoons of heavy whipping cream to that. I'm gonna continue mixing this on low just until everything's nice and combined. Then I'm gonna stick it to the side and get started on a separate bowl of heavy whipping cream. So just in a small to medium bowl, I'm adding a half a cup heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna use my hand mixer. I swear this hand mixer is like 20, 25 years old, still kicking. And I'm just gonna mix that, start on a low speed and then gradually move up to a high speed. It usually takes me right at like three minutes to get this to where it's whipped with the stiff peaks. So there you go. And then we're just gonna almost fold this into our almond butter frosting mixture. So I'm just gonna plop it all in with a spatula and then turn our stand mixer on low. Or you can use the fold option on it. Just to incorporate it a little, and then I'm gonna actually take it off and use my spatula to continue mixing it. We don't wanna over mix it. We want it to stay kind of nice and fluffy, but I do wanna make sure that I get it all to like the same color basically. So you'll be able to tell that your heavy cream, whipped cream now, is evenly mixed in. And once it is, we're just gonna take our poke cake out of the refrigerator and go ahead and plop all of that almond butter frosting mixture on top and I'm just using the spatula to evenly spread that all over to frost our keto poke cake. While I'm doing this I do have that little two to three tablespoons of chocolate mixture. I do have that on low heat on the stove top remelting because we're going to drizzle it on here for a garnish and once this is frosted evenly I am grabbing those Evolve almond butter cups that we chopped up. And because I only used two of them, I'm just gonna kinda strategically hand place them on here. If I had more, I would just sprinkle these as I go. But I'm just gonna hand place them so that they're on here evenly. And then grabbing that melted chocolate off the stove top, I'm just gonna use that same whisk to drizzle this over the top of our keto almond butter chocolate cake. Uh, usually I would use a knife to make drizzles and make them nice and pretty and all that. 
but I just didn't even want to risk scratching this nonstick pot. <laughs> so I'm using this silicone coated whisk and just kind of jiggling it over the top of my dessert so it goes wherever it goes. And I think it ended up looking pretty in the long run anyway, but I was just more concerned with how it would taste. So you do this part however you like. And after it's all drizzled, I am putting it in the refrigerator for at least another half hour just to set all the way. And then taking it out. Recommended serving size on this is to get 16 servings out of it. So just to keep us on point with that, of course, if you're following a strict keto diet you may not even be to the point that you're ready for any keto desserts but if you are you may also be using a scale to measure and make sure that you're getting the absolute correct amount of carbs and that your macros are on point for me that's not where I am <laughs> three years into this so I'm just making some lines there so that I kind of know where to cut to make 16 servings and then scooping some out the middle and you can see that left quite a mess that first piece generally does and here it is plated up this was so delicious recipe works great using almond butter i'm sure you could try it with other nut butters but if you're not allergic to peanut butter and peanut butter fits well into your keto diet check out her original recipe down below and definitely try it that way i love using almond butter it does have a little bit less carbs a little bit more fiber healthy fats for me it just works better overall and then i find i don't crave it as much either as peanut butter because peanut butter and chocolate is just like such a great combination but anyway there you go Hope you enjoyed this keto easy dessert video. Again, make sure you check out Carolyn Ketchum's website. She's absolutely my favorite keto blogger ever. And uh, until next time, bye y'all.